Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Brandon Johnson from Used Boats TV. Now, as you know, I went to work for myself. We started our own boat dealership. We have a trailer business here and we have our custom boating supplies. Well, I just got a call from a friend of mine that's a boat broker in the area, wants me in a bit of trade. So as I go check out this boat, I'm gonna take you guys with me to kind of show you how I would look at a boat in terms of uh, what I would look at to buy it. And I'm gonna show it to you because if it's nice, we're gonna buy it and sell it. Um, we'll be back in 30 seconds. <laughs> So once again, what we're doing today is we're going to go boat shopping together. So this boat belongs to a customer of a friend of mine that's a broker. That's a tongue twister there. Uh, I had to record this like 20 times just to say it right. But anyhow, on a broker boat, it's almost impossible to trade. What's a broker boat? Somebody is selling a boat for somebody else. So the broker doesn't own the boat. That, so in reality, for boat buying, that'd be like trying to trade you know, your house in on another house to buy it. And that may work out, but the majority of the time, no. It just doesn't work out that way. So the broker has reached out to us, you and I, we're going together to make a buy bid on this boat here. So a buy bid, meaning there'll be X number of dollars allotted in credit towards the guy's purchase for the boat that he's actually going to buy. Um, I wanted to do a video like this recently where I would take you guys with me to show a boat that we did buy, but it was cold. It was raining. My four-year-old jumped in a puddle, uh, slipped and fell. So it would have made for a great video, but it just didn't work out because it didn't float. It was very stressful. My wife would have killed me. If she would have saw my four-year-old swimming in a puddle on a freezing cold day on our YouTube channel. So we definitely don't want that. So this boat's supposed to be a two-owner, local, uh, kept since new here, belongs to a guy in the military, retired here, and wants a bigger one. Um, it's supposed to be in beautiful condition and always well maintained. Now, salespeople say a lot of things and a lot of things they don't really know. So that's why it's important, you know, really step one is to check it out yourself. Go look at it. I know a lot of people will say, you know, you want service history. Well, sure, if you can get it, but it's almost impossible to get. And that's a common question I always got. Do so you have service history on file? No. Why? Privacy. A lot of people aren't going to want, you know, if you sell your boat to some weirdo, do you want them to have your name and address and phone number on all your receipts with potentially even your credit card number on it? Uh, I don't, I think all of us agree. No, we, we definitely don't want that. So that's why on a, a boat with a lot of systems like this, I would recommend having a survey done simply because it, a surveyor will go through and tell you about all the systems working or not working. Basically, it's like a home inspection. You wouldn't want to do that on an open bow. And I know this is when the internet trolls are going to kill me for even saying that, but an open bow doesn't have a lot of systems. As long as the batteries are up and you have keys, you know, you and I can go do a survey in like five minutes. We can see what speaker or light bulb doesn't work. But, you know, a boat like this where there's a lot of, you know, very labor intensive and expensive systems to work on or replace, I would definitely recommend it. Um, but for what we're doing and we're doing a buy bid, you really can't be all that picky. You got to check it out the best you can and uh, kind of play with it all yourself. And that's hopefully what we're going to do today. Um, so as I... Get down here. I'm going to kind of show you what I would look for while I'm boat shopping. Because in reality, you know, this is our money. We are buying this boat to resell it. And if it's nice, you know, we will, in fact, resell it. So you're, I'm going to show you everything that I look for and everything about this one in case we do buy it so that we can sell it. Otherwise, I'm going to fail it. <laughs> We're not going to buy it. Let's walk down here and check it out. Wind's going to play hell on our audio today. We're here at the Lake of the Ozarks. Basically, this would be almost like a four-way to Party Cove. There is the Grand Glaze Bridge over there. And here is our Chaparral Cruiser boat that we're checking out. Oh, it's got a beautiful big swim, plat swim platforms.com aftermarket platforms on it. And that's great because the factory platform on this was really, really tiny and no good at all. So the boat could use a buff and wax, but it's always hard to see like on a, a day like this when it's real dreary out, just how shiny the boat can be. It looks like the top cap has a good shine to it. So one thing I always look at, obviously, is the gel coat, but also look at the rub rail. If the rub, rub rail is just really beat to hell, you, you got to wonder why. Why is the rub rail beat to heck? Because the guy was a bad driver. And that depends on, you know, what area of the country you're kind of looking into. 
like on our lake, there's a bar or restaurant every few miles. I mean, just right over there, there's a great big one. There's another great big one back in there. Um, if there's, if the boat comes from a lake where there's nowhere to really dock or tie up, then the rub rail should be in good shape. But the rub rail appears to be pretty decent, so that leads me to believe the guy was a, a decent boat driver. And the platform's not smashed in, which tells me they're careful. Platform was popped out like that, but uh, that just pops back in with a flathead screwdriver. So our logos are a little rough on that other side. This side must have set in the sun because it's more oxidized. Once again, that, that'll just buff out. Scratches and scuffs, scrapes, stuff that's ugly. Look for weird, funky circles in the gel coat. You know, something that was fixed poorly. Things like that. The bottom paint appears to be in good shape. I do wish that the boat was out of the water so we could really check that out. Because something that's important for cruisers, if they let the bottom paint go for a long time, you can get blisters. Just like, you know, when we get burnt, basically to blister in the through the gel coat, not having a scratch fixed or something or anything, and then water gets in there. Now we know for sure it's two in our boat. You can damn near see where the old name was. Let's go ahead and climb aboard here. So the canvas all appears to be in decent shape. You know, a big thing on cruisers is what is it missing too? Because it's hard to find parts for stuff, you know, like a bimini top, uh, covers, and that's very expensive to have made aftermarket. If it's already on there, <laughs> we don't have to pay to find it. I'm gonna go ahead and cover the, uncover this and I'll be All right, right. it's uncovered now and really and truly, I've not looked at this boat yet. So we're actually getting in it together for the <laughs> first time. The vinyl appears to be in great shape. This is something that's kind of nice to point out too. The original owner's manual. Someone cared enough to keep everything together. This is, this boat's like a 97. That's very, very impressive. I wonder if I can see the whole ID number. Remember, if the boat's like pretty much newer than a 70s, the last two digits, of the whole number is the year. And right there, 97. I'm sure you couldn't see that. Right back here, we got a little shower. Uh, so back to kind of what I look for, stress cracks. And we got a few little ones here, got some here, but there's nothing we can do about that. It's just in the gel coat. It's you know not structural. If it was structural, it'd be split open. Come back here. So this is nice. This back seat folds out of here. I'm not gonna do it all the way because I wanna show you the motors. But, so there's a leg that kicks out and that's a nice shape. And that gives you a lot of room back here, a lot of seating, which is something you struggle with in a cruiser. Cap and seat's nice. It's got the arch rear facing. Taking a look at the helm. Now this is something I always look really hard at because vinyl you can replace, you can fix, you can clean. Gel coat, you can you know, wax, polish, you can clean. Um, helms, shifter housings, that stuff's hard. See, that's in really nice shape. We can read all our buttons and switches. Our debt, our helm looks amazing, and this all seems to be original. Always look for different colored indicators, or you know, if these are cracked out, the screws and the helm panels looks like it's been taken apart and put back together a bunch of times. And you got to think, well, have the gauges been replaced? These are definitely original. It's only got 254.5 and 254.2 hours. That's incredible. Uh, nice non-glaring helm. Another thing I always look for on big boats is uh, see if there was ever any like Sorry, my wife called me, but everything in the cockpit looks great. I don't see anything funky in here. Coming down to the cabin, first thing, take a deep breath. Breathe in. This boat actually smells phenomenal. So in a cruiser, look down at the carpet and it is beautiful. Also look up at the headliner. Because it is extremely expensive. I mean, to the point of don't even buy it if the headliner is junk and that is important to you to, to have one that's nice. I don't see water stains around any of the windows. Uh, this is nice because it has the bow sun pad that goes up on top. Um, we're rocking a little bit here. It's got the ultra leather, which is great. See the floral print really shows its age. But privacy curtain for the master. It's got screens on the windows. And here's our main distribution panel look at that kick-ass tv that's awesome i know it's dark i'm sorry guys we have all of our dc systems that's direct current from the battery down here we got our generator and shore power so this is how we kind of control it all right so looking at the little dinette you know everything's nice in here it's got a refrigerator it's got a stove top back here oh we got going to the mid cabin it's super dark looks like there's some filler cushions some sweet mirrors. I imagine those cushions make this into a bigger secondary bed. 
taking a look at the head. Always take a deep breath. It's so dark. But it's got a vacuum flush toilet, which is super nice. It's one big fiberglass liner in here. It's not a bunch of split pieces. You know, all of our doors actually fit good. Trim's not coming apart. Very impressive. Even on a cold day, if it was like crusty down in here, you could smell it. Man, the water's rough. Looks dry as a bone down there. Let's get back here and get some light going. Big old boat must have went by. Let's take a look at that motor. I'm gonna shut this off. We gotta move the carpet. Oh yeah, it looks great in there. So I always look at the manifolds, see if they're crusty, rusty, ugly. Anything funky in here, something you know, it's just out of place. Look at your pulleys, there's no rust or anything on there. Now, a boat like this, it's always been kept in the water. It will be a little nastier in the bilge because it was always maintained in the water. So you can spill something, but it actually looks pretty good. Here's our generator. I don't know if we can read the hours, but I'll put an ad on this boat if we get it and it'll have it. All of our batteries look good. I don't see anything that's alarming down in here whatsoever. It's in great shape. I'm gonna flip this around well, here. Actually, this boat's in very, very nice condition. I do wanna drive it, just to make sure everything runs good and is tight and it runs as it should. But in terms of condition, it's definitely worth making an offer on. Um, you know, someone that takes care of a boat like this to this magnitude, you have to assume it's gonna run pretty good. So I'd probably get, you know, a top offer from me. A boat like this, I'm gonna list for 23.9. It's got twins, a gin, heat and air, not missing anything. That's a great value for someone on a 30 foot, you know, cruiser that has all the amenities at home while on the water. Um, hopefully we get it. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't, and we'll see you on the water. Just a good old boy.